Hello everyone and welcome back. It's time to finish up our breakdown videos from that new footage from the Capcom TV. And we're going to be covering Manon and DJ today and a little bit of Honda and Dawson. We got some new stuff for them as well. If you guys missed out on our previous video, we also covered the rest of JP and Marisa, including their Twitter clips. So be sure to check those out as well. So let's get right to it. Let's start off with Manon. We're going to go over the gameplay footage of well, whatever gameplay there actually is besides the jumping. And we can see right when the match starts, Manon already starts with one level to her metal level. Right. And as we know, Manon is the first uh, grappler that we saw for Street Fighter 6. And we know that this level is very important to her game plan because it amplifies the damage of her throws and gives her throws new properties as well. And uh, we see the effects for the first time in this footage right here. Other things worth pointing out about the metal levels is that they persist through rounds. So whatever metal level you get, you get to keep it. With the footage we see, we see the max level up to four so far, but I would imagine there's probably no limit to how many levels you can get. And we know that it so far just amplifies the damage of her throws. Uh, Mir, you actually made this good screenshot for us comparing the, the damage level for command grabs slowly going up per level. Right, and I would assume that they would change the damage for the hit throw as well, because uh, unfortunately in the footage we only see the, you know, the unblockable command grab, but we don't see the other one that we saw in the previous trailers. So unfortunately you cannot make that comparison. The blog post about the character seemed to imply that other properties would change as well. Uh, we know that the animation for the command throw changes as uh, the levels go up. So maybe she gets thrown vulnerability or something else as well. And finally, if you guys don't know by now, the only way for Manon to level up these metal levels is by landing one of her two command grabs. She has one command grab called Manege Dore, and that is the unblockable command grab. It's the only one we see in this footage. And there's another command grab. It's a hit grab called Ronverse, and this one you can actually combo into. It's not unblockable. Now, the next interesting part about this footage, man, it really got me scratching my head, is that we think she has a feint. At first, we thought she was whiffing her command grab constantly, but I think this twirl that she's doing is actually something else entirely. Right, especially because we can see that this is a completely different animation from her two command throws, and the entire duration of the move is quite short. She moves forward a little bit, a little bit like a command dash, yeah, if you look at her right elbow, you can see it's a lot more raised and it's horizontal. That's one way to tell. Another way is that they're both using dynamic controls. So why the dynamic controls make Manon do a command grab when she's out of range or even when DJ's jumping? Is it supposed to do the best move for the situation? Mm -hmm. So that's another hint. Another thing is that if a command grab was being whiff, that would be a very, very impressively fast whiff, which would be extremely scary. I think a command throw would probably have much longer recovery frames than that. Yeah, I would imagine. And like you mentioned in the commentary audio leaks, uh, there's two lines that insinuate she has a feint. And one of them is, keep some guessing with that feint. And the other one, fakes. Uh, this is adds a lot more mix up to Mono now because now that we know she has vacuum uh, target combos and on top of that feints that she can use and it looks like overhead attacks as well. Uh, this character looks <laughs> pretty unga, man. This is like a mm -hmm. Laura 2 situation. Yeah, unfortunately, we never see uh, DJ throw any fireballs. So we don't know if this goes through fireballs. Maybe that's the intended purpose. She could also use it to cancel her normals maybe and do like a fake kind of, uh, you know, turn steal or something like that. Ken mm -hmm. styles, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's possible. But it is worth pointing out, she doesn't go very far. It's not like command dash far. It's just enough where it can make your, your you know, the opponent jump or flinch. Yeah, it's a little Toro. Okay, moving on, we see her also do a standing light punch cancelled into that crescent kick special, uh, that roundabout. And then mm -hmm. it looks like the dynamic controls tries to juggle into level one, but it whiffs. So I don't know what this is about. Right, that's interesting because this is completely meterless. Although it is a counter hit combo, so it might not work from a natural hit. Uh, still, if the juggle into the level one is possible, this would be, you know, an exceptional way of landing damage without spending any meter. Yeah. Uh, so I would assume that there must be some I don't know. I don't want to say command bug, but it seems very strange that, you know, the level one would connect there. But obviously we don't know. We just see a drop. Yeah, maybe it works when it's closer to the corner or something. Now, we also see Manon's standing heavy kick uh, land the punish counter because we theorize that it probably is has some kind of punish counter property to it. It's just an extended stun, though. It doesn't knock him in the air like Ken's 
as standing yeah, but it seems that it's quite a long hit stun animation that the opponent gets put in so she probably can get uh, a follow-up even from quite far away yeah it looks really good i would imagine if someone was chucking plasma and you got like a trade she'd be able to convert from that it would also be easy for her to link her level one super after it as well i would imagine so we also get to see Manol use her command grab raw, the full animation of it, which is really interesting. Uh, so she does, once again, the manage Dore. This is the unblockable one. And uh, you can see as soon as she damages the opponent, she gains the metal level. The first thing I should mention is the range is insane here. She actually spins towards the opponent spins forward and then grabs them. It's not on the spot, so it has a lot of range. And the damage is okay, even for, for level one, I must say. Yeah, the damage seems to be about the same of a punish counter and normal throw which is uh, quite respectable. Like you said, the range is quite far, but it seems based on some preliminary frame counting to be about 10 frames of startup. So it is quite slow as far as throws are concerned because a normal throw is five frames in Street Fighter 6. This gives us a big hint, I think, Mir, on how grapplers are going to work in Street Fighter 6 because we did have our concerns that there are so many normals in this game that are minus that it's hard to imagine grapplers having five frame command grabs, you know? Another important thing I should point out is even though the Manage Dore does a lot of damage, after Manon hits the opponent, she goes so far backwards after it lands Mir, she basically resets back to neutral. Uh, this command throw, as well as uh, Kimberly's command throw, for example, uh, they score hard knockdowns, so you cannot back rise out of this. One more thing I guess I should mention is if the opponent just so happens to drive impact during this. Since Manon's moves forward, it'd be easier to grab a drive impact in general with the commander. Yeah, especially because the drive impact moves towards you as well. Let's go back to that level 1 super again, Mir, because mm -hmm. uh, this is kind of interesting. She slides forward really far and only does a single hit. You know, the first thing that popped in my head is, wow, this would be so good against zoners because of the distance and speed, right? But then mm -hmm. I remembered with the latest patch notes from the beta is that they got rid of the fireball invincibility across the board on level one supers. Right. And uh, I would assume that this is still uh, strike invulnerable, so she could use it as a reversal. And we really don't know she has a special move that could be used for the same purpose. So yeah. this might be her only reversal option. Uh, it also side switches, I should point that out too. Yeah, this could be useful to get out the corner. I guess in general, lower is its utility mid-screen because uh, it makes it harder for Manon to push you to the corner using a super. Okay, right at the end of the match mirror, we see two quick things. First, we see what looks like a new special move, but it could be a command normal. We see the, the swan feathers, but I personally think this is her arabesque because we got the audio leaks that say goes in with the arabesque. So it looks like she's doing an overhead with this and it looks quite fast. This overhead seems to cover quite a lot of space. So it it's a big threat, especially in round ending scenarios because it goes so far, even after a command throw. Uh, it's still a threat. I should also point out that the arabesque, like in ballet, you're standing on one foot. So mm -hmm. this is the same thing we see with the animation, but I could be wrong. Uh, the final thing we see is this two hit target combo. Now we saw the first attack of this target combo at the very beginning, but it looks like an anti-air. Manon has her hands up, you know, she's doing like a ballet pose. And then the second hit hits downwards. It could be an overhead as well. And this is the finishing blow, so we can't tell if this target combo has that vacuum effect like her other target combos, because like I said, it's the killing blow. And although the second hit does look like an overhead, DJ doesn't recoil like you normally would when you're hit by an overhead. So it might just, you know, be an, uh, an aesthetic thing and not actually be an overhead. My final thoughts on Manon is that I'm happy her command grab doesn't give her crazy Oki. But then again, we haven't seen the Ron Verse when she lands that. Uh, but at the same time, I'm also scared about this faint move now that we yeah. think that she has. Yeah, in general, characters in Street Fighter 6 have a lot of moves, and uh, Manon definitely has a lot as well. We've seen a couple in the trailers that weren't in this footage. Uh, she just looks like she has a really, really big toolkit. I would assume that since landing throws is so important to her and this whole metal level business, that her combos are gonna be a little bit on the lackluster side, but once you have the level uh, quite high, the damage is just gonna be so impressive that it's not gonna matter. All right, let's skip over to DJ now, Mir. Um, there's not much to talk about DJ, unfortunately, unless you wanna count how many times the player does drive impact. <laughs> 
<laughs> Lots to count there. <laughs> it's like a lot, it's like 10 plus or something. It's insane. Anyways, the first thing is hard to catch, but if you look really carefully, uh, when DJ lands the DI, he does a quick two hit target combo. It looks like a light into a medium kick. Yeah, it does look like standing light punch into standing medium kick, which we see standalone later on. So we know that is uh, also something that he can do without having to do the target combo. And we're guessing that this is a target combo because uh, the light punch seems to have no recovery, like as if it's cancelled into the medium kick, which, you know, would make sense if this were a target combo. We also see DJ's heavy kick twice. Good range, not much to talk about. Yeah, I wonder if this is going to have some punish counter properties similar to uh, Manon's. Now, actually, here's something that's interesting, and we're kind of scratching our heads over this too. We see two attacks. We think the first one is his crouching heavy punch, and then the next attack is a short range heavy punch. We think this is a standing heavy punch, actually. And it goes standing mm -hmm. heavy punch into the machine gun upper. Uh, what do you think these normals are? Right, so we're guessing that the first normal we see is a crouching heavy punch because later on we see it land as a punish counter and it seems to have quite a lot of hits done then. And this other normal looks like his old uh, far standing heavy punch that is cancelable as we see, so that's convenient. Uh, if this character is still a charge character, you might have to do a standing cancel into it, but we know that he also has that just cool move that is not a charge. And so you could use this to combo into it. So yeah, we do see the machine gun upper a couple of times and a lot of people have pointed out, Mir, this thing does a massive amount of damage for some reason. Why? Mm -hmm. yeah, I guess this is another callback to Street Fighter 2 where <laughs> yes, it definitely is. Uh, DJ could stun you just by jumping in and then kill you right after. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I wonder if the dynamic controls is like mashing turbo controller styles or can you even mash to amplify the damage? I'm mm. sure it's hard to combo into. It seems to have long startup, like what he's comboing to specifically. But man, this is so much. Like, what about the OD version? Like, I just. Right, especially Machine Gun Upper used to be a down charge. Famously, in Street Fighter 4, was very difficult to land because it had no range. So I'm curious if it's going to be the same deal here, right? Like, maybe, like you were mentioning, difficulty combo into, but just very rewarding. I can only imagine in Drive Rush combos and such, if you can figure out a way of getting enough down charge, uh, this could be a very powerful ender. Oh, Oh, yeah absolutely and then you can go to like a level three as well this this looks nuts I, I mean it does more damage than a level one super it almost looks like it's mm -hmm. crazy okay so moving further along we do see that crouching heavy punch again that we think it is and we see the punish counter and you guys get a, a glimpse of a lot of stuns for yeah we don't know if this move is cancelable probably isn't considering that his other heavies appear to be cancelable you can probably use this for uh with punishment from far away especially because it has this extra property now we get to see that long heavy punch again that we saw from uh the other the pre-order trailer and this mm -hmm. heavy punch we think is a command normal maybe like a forward hard punch for example and it is cancelable because uh in the other trailer footage dj links a light kick instead afterwards and this cancels right into machine gun upper which also combos but i should note it's a counter hit right and uh, again assuming that the machine gun upper is a charge move this will be a little bit tricky to perform on a stick uh definitely a hitbox would be <laughs> advisable here <laughs> <laughs> or dynamic controls yeah or dynamic controls oh i guess another thing that could add to this is that dynamic controls completely bypasses the need for charging so we saw a lot of weird things uh but we still don't know if that means that you know this character is charged or not yeah or hybrid yeah exactly there's so many questions i have about dj there's so many things unanswered just about whether him he's a charge or a hybrid about how his fireballs work and you know they're just cool and now this machine gun upper damage and his level two there's there's so much man he's like one of the most unknown yeah. characters right now that's been revealed yeah, we unfortunately we barely saw anything we didn't see any fireball at all or the faint for that matter yeah we saw a lot of jumping attacks that's just about it <laughs> yeah and di that's pretty much it yeah. so sorry we can't give you guys any more info than that Okay, moving on, Mir, we got some bonus footage as well for Honda and Dalsum. Not super exciting, but we did learn a couple of more things since our last breakdowns. Uh, let's start with Dalsum. The first thing we see, this weird upward kick command normal, like he's mm -hmm. upside down and kicks. Like, it looks like maybe a launcher or an anti-air. Yeah, it seems relatively slow. So maybe it is a, a higher reward anti-air that he can pick if he is, you know, ready for an anti-air. And then maybe this is cancelable into whatever move and you can get something out of this. Maybe a drive rush combo even. We also see Dalsum do, looks like a light punch in the air. And it's not like the super long 
light punch for an instant overhead setup, you know? So maybe Dawson might have lost his, you know, boom headshot KO <laughs> setup. Yeah, we know that his uh, jumping heavy punch is still the stretchy arm one, but that might be harder to attempt because it doesn't seem to have exceptional range. Like you said, this jumping light punch is not quite the same as it was in Street Fighter V, which had exceptional range. The jumping medium kick, though, seems still stretchy and going down, so I'm yeah. curious if that's what they want you to use instead. I don't think we'll see much of this anymore anyway, is because you know there's no stun anymore another interesting thing mirror is that dalsum has a crouch throw apparently even the director confirmed this we see first that Dalsum had two forward throws. One where he flips underneath the opponent and tosses him. And the other one where he does like the, the yoga nookie, you know, where he hits him in the head. Yeah. And that one in particular seems to be a crouch throw. And I'm assuming it means like you crouch with Dalsum and throw the opponent. Right, that's the interesting part. That's how I understood it as well. Because traditionally, there are some throws that have a different animation and properties on opponents that are crouching. But back in Street Fighter 2, uh, there were some characters, namely uh, Zangief, that had crouch throws where you were crouching and you got a different animation. Yeah. And based on what the director was saying, it seems to be the case for this one, uh, which is quite interesting. I wouldn't have expected to, them to go back to that uh, sort of mechanic, but I suppose that the director is really a fan of Street Fighter 2, so maybe this is another callback. Yeah, I would imagine Zangief has stuff like this too. It's kind of strange that Dalsum has this in particular. I looked at both throws and this crouch throw doesn't knock the opponent as far as his normal uh, forward throw does. Yeah, maybe on uh, a punish counter, since uh, it's a hard knockdown, it's possible for Dalsim to approach and do something with it. And I guess I should mention that the damage on both this crouch throw and the forward throw is exactly the same. That's interesting. We also get a quick peek at Dalsim's forward dash mirror. And I think this is worth pointing out because it looks decent. Like it's not that slow that you would imagine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it doesn't have that fancy animation that he had in 355 anymore. So maybe it's going to be a little bit trickier to see as well. I love his run animation in CVS2. It's so sick. He like twirls. <laughs> <laughs> it's really cool. Finally, the only other thing worth mentioning is his drive reversal. Uh, it seems to have just a little bit further range than normal because a lot of the drive reversals have like terrible range in this game. That's what I thought as well, but he doesn't move forward at all. So I wonder if that compensates for the fact that his stretchy hands are slapping at you and knocking you down. Maybe being a universal mechanic and uh, everyone has the same range, but I'm not sure about that. Like yeah. at, a, at the first glance, it definitely does seem like it does have a little bit of range. It's a cool animation, though. Yeah, I'm really curious how Dalsum is going to play this time around since he seems to be a much better zoner with horizontal and air fireballs this time. I'm curious how he'll do with the, the Street Fighter 6 system mechanics. Yeah, especially when he's maintained that air mobility that he got uh, from Street Fighter 5 in the form of the Yoga Float. Yeah. Okay, finally, let's talk about our boy Honda. Uh, not much has been shown in this footage once again. Uh, we see the first headbutt at the beginning and he seems to be charging. Right, we see that both players are playing on classic controls, so they would require to have charge to perform charge moves and as we see through the footage, every time the headbutt is performed is after walking back for a little bit. So I yeah. think that's proof it needs charge. But another interesting thing is that he's constantly mashing punch. You can see he's trying to do 100 hand slap the entire match, but it's like not coming out from just even mashing light punch. So I think it's really, really possible this 100 hand slap is a command like core circle forward punch. Yeah, that is a, that is a possibility. We do see it come out a couple of times and I wonder if it is just, you know, a coincidence because he's been, it was mashing a little bit too much even on the directions. <laughs> yeah. We also get to see his forward heavy kick command normal. The animation looks really weird. Like his leg doesn't extend out fully this time around. It looks like more of kind of like a roundhouse kick, uh, but I was wishing I would see some, uh, the punish counter properties on this thing. I would imagine it has extended stun yeah, it's interesting because the foreign movement is very limited, uh, which could be intentional, especially if it does have uh, special properties on punish counter because it could give you a combo and as such they don't want it to go all that far. And uh, it might not even be a low this time because when we see Dalsim parry it a few times, he doesn't assume a special stance like you normally would see when you're parrying lows. So it might still be a high attack. The last thing to mention in the match is that he does a 100 hand slap, but as a punish counter, and he does link a standing light punch afterwards. Right, that's another unique thing about Street Fighter VI is that um, in many situations in previous games, and a little bit less in Street Fighter V where there were some unique moves that uh, worked this way, but you lost uh, properties like counter hit when you were using a multi-hitting move, but Street Fighter VI uh, seems to have uh, done away with that concept. 
almost entirely. And as such, the 100 hand slap still maintains the extra frame advantage even on punish counter. And unfortunately, that's it for Honda. Uh, once again, I want to know if this character is a hybrid or a full charge character. I think Honda would fit well in Street Fighter 6 because his 100 hand slap hits so quickly, it would just destroy drive impact. So I just want to know what happens when he does his headbutt and someone tries to drive impact that and how that works. Maybe it's going to be like uh, Marisa's special moves that just goes through it. <laughs> yeah, like Honda's supposed to be a bully. So I, I would imagine it would be really strong still to mm -hmm. throw that out constantly throughout the match. Maybe because the drive impact is able to beat it, they made it very safe on block in this game. And as such, even safer to throw out if the opponent is leaping at the wheel. So let's wrap this up. We're finally caught up on all the breakdowns for every single character. And uh, the next time we get more news or an update, of course, we'll let you guys know as as soon as possible i just want to say happy holidays everyone i hope everyone has a great feast <laughs> uh and uh and a happy new year's have fun guys take care everyone peace bye bye